Shakespeare's legacy lives on in rusty contemporary exploration of human experience. Hello, wonderful attendees. I'm your host, Dalvinder Kaur from lovely professional university. Get ready to dive into today's topic that is exploring literary continuities from Shakespeare to Rushdie. Before we proceed further, allow me to introduce the experts of that day. Dr. Ajo Bhatta, professor and head department of English, School of Liberal and Creative Arts, lovely professional university. With an academic background and extensive research on notable literary figures, Dr. Bhatta brings a wealth of knowledge to the table. So now I would like to introduce Dr. Rason Matthew, Assistant Professor of English at Kerala, with a PhD in English from lovely professional university. Dr. Matthew's expertise lies in contemporary literature. Don't miss the opportunity to delve into discussion on literature, media, society, and more. So now I would like to introduce Dr. Sakshi Singh, Assistant Professor, Department of English, School of Liberal and Creative Arts, lovely professional university. With a diverse academic background spanning from electronics and communication engineering to English literature, Dr. Sakshi brings a unique perspective to her research. Her expertise lies in exploring themes of identity, sexual violence and more. So now I would like to introduce that mission nominee also in this webinar, Mr. Rishabh Sharma, officer and area coordinator at the Department of Tyabs, North One Division of Admission. Mr. Sharma plays a pivotal role in connecting the university with various institutions and organizations. Before we proceed further in today's session, I would like to request everyone for any questions you can write in the chat box or in the Q&A box and same will be addressed from my side in the end of this webinar. And now I hand over the things to Dr. Ajo Bhatta, Dr. Matthew and Dr. Sakshi Singh. And it would be an absolute delight to listen from them. Over to you all. Thank you, Dr. Kaur, for such a warm welcome. I, on the behalf of the Department of English, Lovely Professional University, I welcome all the participants and I request Dr. Sakshi to please share her screen so that we can proceed ahead. Over to you, Dr. Sakshi, please share this. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Sakshi Singh uh, from Department of English, Lovely Professional University. Um, and uh, we are going to start with today's webinar. So the purpose of today's webinar is to actually take you through um, the significance of English literature in contemporary times. And I hope towards the end of this presentation, uh, you are able to make an informed, uh, informed decision about your career. So there is a very famous quote by um, Ezra Pound who says that literature never exists in vacuum. That means that literature is actually a reflection of all the cultural, social, and historical changes of its time. So if we trace the kind of um, uh, history of English literature, we can go back to 14th century, where Chaucer and Langland were very important in establishing poetry as a genre in English literature. Then we can come to Elizabethan age where we come across uh, Shakespeare, the creative genius who uh, was very, very um, important writer because he could tap into the basic hum uh, emotions of um, human beings in terms of power, in terms of their uh, uh, you know, uh, relationships, in terms of their basic human emotion. From Shakespeare, we kind of go to neoclassical writers where we come across Dryden and Pope, and then we go to Romantic writers, Victorian writers, eventually to modernist and postmodernist writers where we come across Salman Rushdie, who talks about globalization, who talks about identity, who talks, uh, talks about post-colonialism. So these writers, they belong to different eras. These writers, they have different issues and uh, different ways of presenting stories. But the commonality between all these writers remain that they actually reflect the society. They reflect, there is always going to be a reflection of issues, problems, social factors, political factors, which are relevant to the society. 
and that way english literature plays a very important role it would always continue to expand itself according to the contemporary times and we have examples we have examples in the sense that now if you talk about english literature it's not stuck up to say 14th century or 17th century at any more press f5 it will go so sorry f5 F five PPT mode. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Is it okay, sir? Thank you, thank you. All right. Yes, yes, thank you. So, so I was saying that uh, uh, yes, literature continues to expand itself. It doesn't stuck itself in one particular time period, and we have great examples now. If you talk about literature in contemporary times, you are actually. including a lot of marginalized voices we are talking about race ethnicity we are talking about identity sexuality uh, we are talking about climate fiction where we are raising awareness about environmental issues and how climate change is actually impacting our society we are talking about queer literature now which is challenging the heteronormativity in the contemporary society uh the fact that english literature the term you know the name english literature now does not limit to england anymore it does not uh, limit to the first world problems anymore that's why we have intersectional feminism now the problem with feminism is just not with the white women we have actually got into our um, you know now we are talking about a lot of problems uh, of women uh, who belong to different caste who belong to different race who belong to different uh, community altogether uh, in a day and age where social media is so important we are actually exploring digital stories we are exploring multimedia stories so what i am trying to say is that it's a continuous expansion of english literature right and that uh, gives a lot of opportunities to us as faculty members and researchers to explore and create something beautiful out of it so continuing with this discussion i would like to um, ask dr raisen matthew so so what are your views about the interdisciplinary aspect of english literature Thank you, uh, Dr. Sakshi, for this wonderful opportunity. The Dr. Joy Bhatta for inviting me to this wonderful session. Uh, different participants. So, as coming to your question, the interdisciplinary approach. approach. Uh, uh, apart from uh, the side, I would like to start with the idea of interdisciplinarity. Earlier, it was multidisciplinary. Which is or multidisciplinary that we uh, discussed in university. The time has arrived where the interaction between subjects is what in the discipline approach to uh, is uh, focusing on. Right, as coming to the latest NEP 2020 proposed by the Union government, uh, it highly values the interdisciplinary approach. in things that means in english literature even before this concept also english literature was discussing this particular approach that is i believe because study when i was uh, in my uh, it was combined with another and also communication it is coming to the mass english also phd what i noticed is it, apart from other disciplines uh particularly in humanities and social science particularly in so we deal with different ideas we deal with different situations we try to um, think critically about the things uh, try to find creative ideas or creative methods to solve situations or critical problems problem solving skills but the math no different ideas that we find in the subject itself and that is connected to the other subjects we find english literature uh, getting into any details of different uh, disciplines and uh, giving a hope to those subjects or such situations and, uh, finding a place everywhere that is the that is the word that i that i get now finding a place of its own every discipline in every uh, area of the interdisciplinarity in english literature when we read amida ghosh it's connected environment uh, environmental study 
things and as you civilization and from uh, Shakespeare different, different uh, discussions about different situations of human life so discussing it is not just discussing about humans it is not just discussing about geography it is not just about political science something related to uh, what we uh, this the psychological aspects are there's memory studies developments research uh, the memory studies of legal humanities or the medical humanities that we discuss so all these come and combine and con that is what we uh, see in English as you have mentioned the flights, medical humanity, environmental science, mathematics and statistics. That is also very important. As you know, like we you know uh, the development of artificial intelligence, we used to ask why is it so different from the studies and social. That is a concept. Really. The natural language processing is the language. It's it is connected to linguistics. It is in a way connected to literature and all directly linguistics. Uh, contribute in different areas, different subjects. We have that is the advantage of in my. Yes, Dr. Raisson, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, I believe okay. thanks for that. Yeah, okay. So um, my next question would be, um, you know, as uh, people coming from literature background, uh, uh, we come across some preconceived notions, some myths about uh, English literature as a discipline. I know I have come across many. So can you like share with us some, some misconceptions, some preconceived notions that um, uh, you have come across regarding uh, English literature to be taken as a discipline? I believe the question is really right. I believe the question is, I should answer the question, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Oh, okay. okay. Some of the misconceptions, right? You said while pursuing your bachelor's degree and all postgraduate, I also had such misconceptions when I was just in 11th or 12th. People used to ask me when I was uh, pursuing bachelor's in English, yeah. masters. Uh, are you studying in English literature? Are you, it, is it just points and do we just get intense in the limestone? Uh, after my bachelor's, yeah, first year or second year, I could answer them. No, that's not the only thing that we learn in English literature. English literature is not just what is poems and what is uh, uh, short stories. That is very important. But we are trying to see something different, a different viewpoint. When we teach students, uh, we used to say, is not just one perspective in English or in each race in common. There's not just the one perspective. Each student in the class has different viewpoints and different perspectives, and that is the beauty of English literature. Nobody can say what Shakespeare has written uh, 400 years ago. Uh, it's just the viewpoint of Shakespeare that is correct. No, we cannot say that. We are analyzing, we are uh, trying to find perspectives we are trying to uh, delineate those ideas and find new meanings out of it. That is how a subject grows. And I believe that English literature has grown and it is, it is still now, it is still an active subject of discussion because of this particular aspect of identifying different meanings, finding different perspectives, critical analysis of those themes or discussion viewpoints theories that we can apply to uh, and, uh, topics we learn in, in English. So literature, uh, whether it be English or any any language, it is not just the poems, or it is not just, uh, the story we learn. Through stories, through poems, articles, through research papers, through uh, projects, through outcome-based education, that is what we are focusing right now. I was doing PhD when I was teaching 
I found that particular aspect, the outcome-based education. We are trying to find an outcome when we uh, discuss a particular topic or discuss a particular course uh, in, in, in that uh, area. So the major misconception is this particular topic. The second one would be, uh, this is just for the native speaker, right? Uh, yeah. Why we learn English? That is a question from the Indian perspective. Why do we learn English? English, as we all know, is a foreign language. That's a colonizer. So it's a colonizer language. But learning the colonizer's language or being a colonizer? No. We are again, so we are, we are learning a language to find ideas or tools or to express our views against the different misconceptions or misunderstandings or historical writings against us. Through learning language, through learning learning literary uh, we come to know or we understand different cultures. We understand uh, different things of those uh, cultures. Uh, those communities have contributed to the world. How do they they interact with community? Basically, in all those matters. Uh, in particular, to this question, uh, say that uh, it's not just something that we learn in uh, English. It's connected with uh, as it comes to humanity, design. We are not just limiting to the Department of English. We are limiting exploring the ideas of geography. We are exploring the political science, anthropology, the different things there. We are open to apply our studies and all that. Could be. Yes. Uh, Dr. Matthew, your voice is breaking. Yeah, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's why oh. that's the main point. Yeah, all right. So um, continuing with that question, um, I have a question from Dr. Ajoy Bhatta. Uh, so, sir, I want to ask you, um, you know, while the students, they study English literature, what kind of skills do these students develop over the course of time? Uh, Dr. Sakshi, if I want to answer this question, I would love to say that that in today's era, there are four skills. They are, these skills are very, very important in all the domains. These four skills are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So if a student is doing a master's or UG from LPU, we try our level best to inculcate these four skills among the students. So along with these four skills, we lay stress on analytical skills. We lay stress on creative writing, particularly content writing skills. Because in today's world, content writing is need of an art. So we try our level best to inculcate these skills within our students so that a student can take a job in any multinational company. He or she can become a creative writer. He or she can also become a researcher is having a good writing skills and communication skills you know all the companies hmm. it is in high demand communication skills so we inculcate these skills in our students hmm. uh, so sir, sir just uh, continuing with the same thing that you said uh, um, are there any specialized courses that we are offering to our students in the university Yes, yes, yeah. yes. In order to inculcate these skills, we offer various specialized courses in our MA in English or in our BA in English domains. Like if I talk about MA in English, we have a specialized course on creative and content writing. Yes. We have another specialized course on literary theory and criticism so that students can learn the analytical skills, the theoretical skills, the critical skills. We are also running with the specialized course like European Literature and Translation. Indian writing in English, even uh, English phonetics and phonology. The course title is having a name like Introduction to the Study of Language. And we, we teach them English phonetics because you know that if you can 
speak english but your english is 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 as per the phonemes as per the the study of language is concerned you can you can you can do wonders in your life so in order to in order to improve their pronunciation in order to improve their rhythm in order to improve their accent we have introduced this course that is english phonetics and phonology along with the courses like content writing creative writing even journalistic writing so yes if i talk about ma in english we are having specialized course but for ug two students we have a specialized course like communication skills advanced communication skill where we teach them these four skills and not only these four skills it for our ug students we have also introduced a new course that is literary theory and criticism gender studies indian diaspora so that a student can have a broad overview of how to become a writer along with how to be a writer not only we want our students to do wonder in content writing but we want our students to also uh, write their research papers to also write book chapters to also write various books even and i am very happy to share that so your voice is uh, not audible ma'am uh, can you please continue with the next question all right yes thank you so much ma'am next question yeah so uh, dr raisul matthew my next question is uh, for you um, can you provide examples for various career paths that are directly related to english literature these days for students yes uh, i believe that i am audible to you right yeah yeah sure yeah as uh, as i was mentioning about content writing i believe that uh, it is the major um yes that can be taken because uh, in this uh, particular scenario of uh, emerging chat gpt all those things we come with a machine type of uh, contents that are created nowadays the scenario has slightly changed uh, earlier maybe one year when when the chat gpt was or the open ai was introduced everyone went to that particular area and it, there was a, a confusion regarding uh the future of content writing whether it will be taken by the machine and uh, such generate ais but now slightly the uh, the industries have uh, come to a conclusion that tools are not human there are, there are no human touch in such kind of writing what we need is a content with human touch that is why we are focusing on the critical analysis or the empathy that we learn through uh, the literary topics various literary topics the in poems and short stories that we uh, focus on and we need to talk about the cultural climate through such focus uh, areas so content writing um maybe in your four to years or three to four years would end up in such a situation where it requires only humans and not machines because because a major portion was written by machine people who know that easily can identify what is written by a machine what is written by human because the cognitive level the the, the way humans think write uh, content and different create something different is uh, entirely different what a machine artificial it can create uh so that is one uh we and the second area is the uh, editors or um the editors of newspapers um and also magazines books book chapters etc that is another because left there uh, requires the copywriting skills uh, proofreading skills and uh certain experience that they gain or uh, Uh, within the course also uh, the arts the english situation and afterwards the internships also they can plan for an entrepreneurship 
level with the skills that in the university. So that is what industries require these days. They don't want students to just mug up things and learn what is there in the textbook. They need students to buy skills through uh, what they learn in their syllabus, right? So, uh, and be publishers. That is one option. They can be there's literary agents is another option for them. And uh, as we see uh, around, they can be professors, professors, and also they can teach courses and uh, can go for specialized language uh, training, trainers, English trainers, um, and reviewers, papers, newspapers, and also reviewers for authors in, uh, in, uh, in different, uh, magazines. So there are white of uh, in the while while pursuing that only focus that the student has to do is uh, to explore many things around that is connected with will be there in syllabus, but they will get an option to explore many things, not the just one thing. Whoever who enrolls in one particular subject should be focusing on what would be the industry situation? What would be the situation around them after four years and three years? That is when they uh, graduate, right? That would be the highlight or that would be the focus of uh, who enrolls in any. So uh, in this particular subject, this uh, idea, different opportunities. And uh, as I was mentioning, humanities can also dive up to the Legal uh, kind of uh, fields, and there are psychology uh, related things, cognitive um, psychology, cognitive linguistics. You find uh, uh, plays in reputed organizations where they need the help of a linguist or, or uh, a person who can uh, manage the language side for their company in association with developing. AI tools and all this generative AI. There is a vast field that will be open to students who learn linguistics and also literature uh, on these aspects. And these aspects. Hmm. Uh, actually, uh, just to uh, add on to that, I wanted to ask uh, Ajoy, sir, that uh, you know once our students go out for uh, searching for jobs hand-on experience of course is very important but i want to know from you sir are there any opportunities in terms of internships and projects that we provide to the students before they actually go to the actual market uh, yes uh, dr sakshi uh, if i talk about internships all our master students and all our UG students they have to take summer internship in order to gain a first-hand experience of industry. So they they, they, they mandatory they'll go for summer internship, minimum duration of four to six weeks. Not only this, we introduce community development projects, term papers for our UG and PG students. So yes, my answer is yes, that internship is mandatory part of all MA, all UG program and projects, particularly community development projects are the mandatory part of these programs. Okay, thank you, sir. So, Dr. Matthew, uh, just to uh, sum it up, what we've been discussing so far, um, what intrinsic value does English literature hold for individuals and society as a whole? Could you please shed some light on that? Yeah, of course. Uh, learn it is not just learning English language. When we learn uh, for an enthusiastic student, uh, what I explored from my experience uh, is when we learn a subject, we should be involved in the subject. Otherwise, it would be very boring for anyone, right? Uh, if we are learning English literature, we are not just learning, we are living in that particular world, a different world where we can associate things that we see around. Only when we connect these things, we will be able to enjoy the topics that we learn, enjoy the different that we learn. That is how we learn beyond the textbook, beyond our classroom. So, uh, similar to this question, I would say that English literature or literature in general has that 
value or, or, or gives that particular idea to the student that uh, we have, we are human beings and we are associated with society where we live in. We are not just within that particular society as we uh, as these days about the Vasudeva could have a global family, uh, family in one family, one earth, right? So we are able to find uh, or know about different cultures, how people live there, how people communicate, how situations are in the history. We learn about history, we learn about geography. That's what I was discussing from the beginning uh, in particular questions. In English literature, we have, dip, uh, as in every university uh, in LPU, the different uh, topics that we American literature, Canadian literature, Austrian literature, English literature, English Indian literature, uh, and the lit studies, uh, pure studies, gender studies, all those things are a variety of topics that combine. And we, we, we are trying to explore things, what is, what was in the past, what is now, and what would be in the near future. So that's, that would be the highlight, and that would be the beauty of literature, where we have a, where, where we have a, uh, who, or we would have a stand for uh, How I distinguish English, why I had chosen English literature for my studies was because I wanted a place, something new from what others have been. I felt a uh, different sub, I was uh, finding uh, English literature as, as something different where we can uh, find a space of our own. That is what everyone requires. Uh, find a space of our own to produce research papers, to write articles, to write poems, to learn about things, and to review papers, to find uh, to, to critical analysis, to uh, different options uh, where we uh, where we can contribute to the society. That is the ultimate or the final. Um, Right, and what human being is also is we need to contribute. It's not just learning for us, learning for and contribution. Uh -huh. That would be the idea of uh, uh, the subject. In okay, thank you so much, Doctor Mathi. Somebody's mic is on. I would request him to put his mic muted. Um, anyway, continue with the presentation. Now I request Dr. Rajoy Bhatta to kind of shed some light on our uh, department, on our School of Liberal and Creative Arts, lovely professional university. So, uh, our school, is in the school of Liberal and Creative Arts at LPU. We are in block number 18 and block number 19. Our school established in the year 2005 and we are here running with all the UG programs and all the PG programs. We are very happy to share that uh, we are number one for uh, in social sciences subjects and QS world rankings. We are number 18 globally and we are in number 12 as far as world university rankings are concerned. We are number 12 in social sciences and management. So our institution is one of the top institutions. We believe in outcome-based, industry-driven, research-oriented curriculum uh, with live projects. We, we believe in giving professional careers along with social entrepreneurships, and we also train our students for various competitive examinations. We offer various programs, starting from UG, like Bachelor of Arts, B Honors, B Honors in English, along with Hindi, Punjabi, Psychology, History, we also offer MA in English. MA in English, yes, our specialization is in English. But yes, along with MA in English, we also provide masters in public education, geospatial, social work, library sciences, geography, history. Even we offer psychology masters. Yes. Uh, if I talk about the curriculum based, that how our curriculum is different. Uh, we, we, as I rightly pointed out in the beginning, that we, we did and cooperated community development projects, social projects, and we provide students with a good research environment where they can they can write research papers. Not only research papers, they can write their own creative books, book chapters, 
and we believe in improving in in, in improving their digital skills so that they can expose real time situations and we also believe in blended learning and we are very happy to share that padma shri raskin bonser he designed the syllabi of our courses like the course in creative writing a course in content writing and he himself interacted with our masters ug ba honor students where he 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 highlighted how to become a writer or what are the various things which we have to keep in our mind while writing any poem or while writing any short story or any drama next if i talk about the careers i am happy to share that in ma in english that all our students are placed not only in ma in english but our ba honors in english students our 80% students are placed in ba honors in english and they are doing their jobs as a content writer as a creative writer and they are they are also trainers they are working as assistant professors they are working as civil servants they are working as a school teacher they are working as even they are doing phds some of them are doing post doctoral fellowship so the students of english they are doing multiple jobs in multiple domains if i talk about so these are the uh, few of our students like cherry like kushi they are working in various multinational companies and some of them they have played in ubc net also and they are serving in various institutions in india and abroad so my best wishes to all the students uh, start your journey of unbounding thinking best wishes for your life over to you dr sakshi thank you thank you dr joy but uh, thank you dr asun matthew for this um, very insightful very knowledgeable sessions and as i said in the beginning of the session i hope towards the end of it the students they get more aware of uh, english literature as a discipline the careers that they can get out of it and um, i'm i'm sure you'd be making an informed decision thank you Uh, Dr. Devinder, over to you. We can take. Thank you some. so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sakshi, Dr. Ajo Bhatta, and Dr. Matthew. Uh, so it was wonderful watching you talking on uh, interdisciplinary approach like uh, environmental sciences, uh, uh, medical humanities about the courses, programs you offered, uh, and clear with the students uh, internship uh, curriculum highlights from uh, Ajo Bhatta and uh, many more uh, from our experts. Uh, and now i would request to the mission nominee mr rishab sharma to be on the screen over to you sir unmute yourself first mr rishab am i audible now yes you are audible mr rishab yeah thank you so much ma'am for giving me this opportunity and uh, further i would like to extend my regard to dr hussain and uh, dr joy but but as well as dr sakshi so uh, without taking much of time today we will be discussing about uh, infrastructure part approvals and accreditation of university and uh, eligibility part what programs we are offering so uh, let me share my screen i hope my screen is visible your screen is visible you can continue mr rishab uh, yeah so uh, i'll give you glimpse of each and everything so let's start without wasting much of time uh, it gives me immense pleasure and uh, i feel proud to share with you all that l2 is now nac grade a plus plus university with highest score in first cycle of accreditation among all government and private universities uh, with 3.68 score on 4 point scale if we move further we also have i cur if we talk about approvals uh, we have uh, approval from ncte council of architecture pharmacy council of india bar council of india let's go long we can have a look and then if we talk about membership we are member of association of indian universities we are also member of international association of universities if we talk about ranking and awards uh, lpu has been ranked 23rd uh, uh, by the times higher education world university ranking 2023 uh under we have been ranked second by world universities with real impact ranking 
uh, under atal ranking of institutions on innovation achievements we have been ranked third if we move further if we talk about the exposure and extracurricular activities you can just have a look lq creates a 12 out of 13 lpu students won olympic medals in all, all three categories gold silver bronze if we move further lovely professional university champion of the 37th national inter university Fest, uh, youth festival under the ages of association of indian universities new delhi our students excelled in all the departments whether it is possession music fine arts dance literary theater so uh, if you talk about uh, we have been uh, ranked first runner up uh, for uh, winning historic national sports award molana abdul kalam azad sports trophy 2023 which was awarded annually by ministry of youth affairs and sports government of india our students shined the 19th asian game Nidha Chopra gold medal, Javelin, so Abhishek gold medal in archery. You can just have a look. This is long. I think as we are talking about the exposure available at LPU, you, you, you can see the kind of exposure students get. LPU successfully hosted 106 Indian Science Congress, which was inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Modi. His Holiness Dalai Lama at LPU campus interacted, interacting with students, two former pre presidents in single frame, then President of India, Sri Prana Mukherjee, alongside the Mr. Hamid Karzai, former President of Afghanistan, and our worthy Chancellor, sir, Dr. Ashok Kumar Mittal, Member of Parliament, Rajya Sabha, then Finance Minister of India, Sri Arun Jaitley. And the Venkya Naidu ji, Gohar Gopal Dajis, and many celebrities uh, and sports personalities keep on visiting LPU. And I think I need not to name them. You can you know them by their face. So I'm just uh, scrolling it for you. You you can just have a glimpse. As you LPU also hold one Guinness Book of Record on its name uh, for officially attempting the highest number of people doing Bhangra at a single venue, infrastructure of lovely professional university, state of art infrastructure, Shanti Devi Mittal Auditorium with sitting capacity of around 2,500 people under single roof. We have libraries, labs, and Unimall is there. You can get all your essential needs fulfilled here, whether it is basic needs or you want to go to gymnasium, bowling area. We also have a 50 bedded hospital and university campus. So this is the aerial view of lovely professional university, lush green campus, night view of lovely professional university. We also have indoor stadium facility uh, where uh, we have badminton, shooting range, basketball, volleyball, competitive sports, squash is there. We also have Olympic size swimming pool. So this is the outer view of uh, indoor stadium facility. So now let's go live and uh, where we will discuss about the programs and key structure. Just give me a second. So, uh, how you can check all these details yourself, all you have to do is you need to go to www.lq.in. Please note our website address. I am repeating it for you www.lq.in. When you will go to our website, you need to go to admission. If you are a 12th uh, pass out student or graduated pass out student, you need to click accordingly. As I have clicked after 12th program, then there will be number of disciplines available. Here I have already clicked on English and foreign languages. So under this, uh, we have program BA Honours in English. So I have selected this. Now let's check the eligibility of this program. Eligibility says you need minimum 60% marks in this program. In 10 plus 2, minimum 60% pass 
mark in 10 plus 2 with english as subject to take admission in this particular program then also you need to qualify lpns or cuet exam now lpns is lovely professional universities national entrance and scholarship test on the basis of this test you get scholarship as well as uh, this is part of your eligibility as well so now let's move further now let's check the eligibility uh, the fee structure of this program if we let's come to fee structure part so fee structure is very nominal 50000 rupees per semester but yes in lpu fee structure depend upon the caliber of student because we offer many uh, scholarships as well so you can get scholarship up to 14000 in this particular program that is per semester scholarship so you can get scholarship on the basis of lpns you can get scholarship on the basis of 12th percentage and if we move further let's check you can get scholarship on the basis of cuet as well you can get scholarship on the basis of uh, financial aid if your award uh, of uh, defense personnel so if your parents in paramilitary defense or they are serving or they are retired they are part of capf you are eligible for direct 20% scholarship if if your parents are having any gallantry award so the scholarship will increase so you can check all the details here and if we talk about the important date so let's come to important date now yes online registration started from first may first may onwards and uh, last date of submission of application for lpns and book exam slot is 3 days before the conduct of the exam uh, now let me tell you if you want to give the exam on 17th so in that case you need to book your exam slot uh, today itself if you want to give exam on 18th you need to uh, book your exam slot 3, three days prior and uh, date of entrance exam would be 6th may to 28th of may and display of result will be within 48 working hours last date of admission is within 7 days after declaration of result and subject to last date that is 31st of may please make a note last date is 31st of may to take admission into this particular program now uh, comes to the point that how you can actually apply for this so uh, before that you need to apply for lpns then only you will be able to take admission so fees for lpns is uh, for male applicant fees is 1000 rupees for female applicant fees is 500 rupees now either you can click here and apply or you can go to direct link that is admission.lpu.in please note admission.lpu.in here you need to register yourself once you will register yourself you will get all your credentials on your email id as well as sms so once you log in there you need to click on continue to lpns application and you need to proceed and uh, once you qualify your exam take admission option will be available in in this particular portal only and uh, from here you can process your admission further if you want to connect with us uh, through whatsapp you can note our whatsapp number that is plus 9198525690 otherwise if you want to connect with us through live video counseling zoom uh, zoom video then you can simply click here and you can join similarly if you want to connect with us uh, with our tele counselor you, you can note the number 01824 404 404 i am repeating it for you 01824 404 404 so i hope i have uh, discussed all the important uh, points so thank you so much dalvinder ma'am over to you thank you so much uh, mr rishab sharma um, as uh, i can see there are some questions from our participant can we take uh, questions uh, dr ajoy bhatta dr sachi please please uh, Yes, Doctor Kaur. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Mega is asking here, what themes or motifs from Shakespeare's works can be traced in Rushdie novels? Uh, a very intelligent question, Doctor Kaur. I would like to answer that 
you can find that Shakespeare is known for tragedies and comedies. If I talk about particularly about tragedies, the same themes of tragedies of Shakespeare can be traced in the works of Rashmi. Means if you can say that King Lear is a tragedy, Romeo and Juliet is a tragedy. In the works of Rashmi, or not only in the works of Rashmi, in the works of any postmodern writer, we can see that uh, uh, tragedies are there. Not only the tragedies, but modern tragedies are there, where common man is the victim of the society, and how he is struggling to find his identity. So these are the themes like tragedy, comedy, in order to search for identity, alienation, isolation. So these are the themes which you can trace in the works of Rashmi, and these themes can also be traced in the works of Shakespeare as well. Over Thank to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Ajay Bhatta. Uh, Gurpreet is asking here: In what ways uh, does uh, Rashmi engage with the Shakespearean characters or stories in his own literary creations? Dr. Sakshi, I would like that you can answer. Well, I think uh, Ajoy sir uh, already answered this question uh, uh, previously. But just to add on to that, the fact that Rashmi has been uh, kind of in, um, replicating the same themes in the modern uh, novels, I just to, I just want to add that um, uh, while there was a lot of focus on uh, the royalty, the kings and the nobility during the Shakespearean time. Rashti is somebody who actually happens to talk about the common man, and he happens to imp uh, implicate the same themes in the postmodern world where identity was a problem, right? And identity in the sense that postcolonial identity. I discussed it in the beginning of this, uh, the presentation also. The postcolonial identity, uh, the globalization that has been affecting the hum uh, humans um, of, in, in, you know, in the, in the postmodern times. So the themes, the essence of the emotions remain the same. It's just that, as I said, it's about the influence of contemporary times that gets reflected through the author's work. So, yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sakshi and Ajo Bhatta. I hope uh, all the participants got the answers uh, from our experts. As we come to the end of this webinar, I want to express my deepest gratitude to our experts for sharing their valuable insights and expertise with us. Your presence, enthusiasm, and active participation have made this experience truly special. Hopefully, the attendees found this webinar to be valuable and will be able to utilize the information for better decision making regarding their admissions. If anyone wants to assess this webinar again, they can visit our website that is lpu.in or can be assessed on YouTube also. Stay connected with us for future webinars. Until we meet again, with the permission of my seniors, I would be signing off this webinar. Take care and goodbye. Have a beautiful day.